name is Joji Hattori. I'm a violinist, a musical conductor, but also the owner of this restaurant in Vienna. You just heard a piece called Marche Miniature Viennoise by the Viennese composer Fritz Kreisler. And on the piano, you heard the wonderful Saskia Giorgini. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to take you to the ladies' room of my restaurant because today I'm going to talk about potty parity. Potty parity is a movement which is trying to equalize the waiting time for men and women when using public toilets. And why on earth would I want to talk about it today? There are actually three reasons. First of all, throughout my entire life as a performing musician, I've been listening to the constant complaints of my female fans about the longest queues in front of their toilets during the intermission of my concerts. Secondly, I'm Japanese by origin and generally for Japanese people, toilets are very important. That is why they even produce luxury toilets for private households. These things apparently can wash most parts of your body automatically, flush by itself, warm your butt, and even oversound any um, noises with beautiful music by Mozart. And the third reason why I want to talk about this today is because I am an idealist. Idealists fight for a just cause without any self-interest. And that is in fact the exact opposite of lobbyism when people are fighting only for their own interests. Let me give you some historical background on this theme. Here you can see the floor plan of one of the very first grand-scale public toilets in Europe. When you look at the distribution between men and women, you can see about 80% being assigned to men. And I'm sure this was uh, designed by a man. Well, today things have improved slightly, but it is most surprising to me that in our age of political correctness, there are still so many buildings all over the world which disadvantage women because not enough floor space has been assigned to them. Let me mention one positive example from the United States when in 1989 the very first restroom equity bill was passed in California. It was initiated by then Senator Arthur Torres, a wonderful man, after his wife was stuck at the theater in front of the ladies' room for apparently over half an hour. But even this bill from over 30 years ago has not led to many changes as regard to building regulations. Now let's get to the bottom of this problem. What do we need to change to improve the lives of women to get rid of the terribly long queues in front of their toilets? Now, here we can see a design with an equal amount of space assigned to men and women. But is that what we need? Would an equal amount of space assigned to both genders serve the public toilet needs of women? Well, if I may use an analogy, this could potentially be as unjust as giving the same size doghouse to a little chihuahua and a big Saint Bernard. In other words, I have to say absolutely no to 50-50 as regard to floor space. Because women just need and use public toilets more often than men. My conclusion, after many years of deep research, is that at public performance venues, the correct ratio needs to be 4 to 1, or 80% to 20% in favor of women. Now let me explain to you how I got to this result. Even if we assume that 50% of toilet users are men and 50% women, we would need to assign more floor space for women because a cubicle needs much more space than a urinal. For this discussion, I've actually invented an expression called bladder emptying device, or in short, BED. A BED can either be a urinal or a cubicle. To be fair to architects, I must admit 
that most of them nowadays have thought of assigning the same number of BEDs to men and women. Like in this example. This is a very typical floor plan when they have assigned equal numbers of BEDs. That's why the ladies' room occupies a little bit more floor space. But so far, almost all architects and regulators in the entire human history have failed to consider all the many reasons why women attend public toilets much more often than men and stay much longer once they are there. Now I will introduce a new unit for this subject called Public Toilet Usage Minutes, or in short, PTAMs. In order to determine precisely how much floor space one needs to assign to women's toilets, we need to calculate how many PTAMs women need in comparison to men. First, let's look at category one. How often do men or women attend public toilets? 1a, bladder size. The average woman, and I've said average, has a smaller bladder than the average man. That means they need to go to the toilet more often. And that means they need more, more PTAMs, 54% for women and 46 for men. Then we look at 1b, mentality difference. The average woman is a little bit more cautious than the average man. That means even if they don't have to, they're more likely to attend the toilet before the next long opera act starts. The difference here is not very big. 52% for women versus 48 for men. And 1c visits for reasons other than emptying the bladder. Many female friends of mine have explained to me that in addition to visits related to the female cycle, they often go to the toilet just to refresh their makeup or in order to accompany their girlfriends. The difference of PTAMs here is the greatest. 58% for women versus 42 for men. Now I will proceed at looking at category 2. How long do ladies or gentlemen stay at public toilets? 2a. The most obvious difference is the lack of urinals for women. Well, when they come to the toilet, they need to approach the cubicle, open the door, get into the cubicle, close the door behind them, and lock the door. Put their handbag down. Some ladies disinfect the seats. Then they need to get undressed, sit down. After they're finished, use toilet paper, get dressed again. Oh, grab the handbag, don't forget that. Unlock the door, open the door, exit the cubicle and close the door behind them. This all takes so much more time than men going through the rhino. Category 2b. This is about the flow speed of urine. Well, in my entire research, I have tried to be really objective. And that included that I didn't neglect the potentially one reason which might increase the duration of men's visits. Of course, this shouldn't change your overall statistics very much, but allegedly some older men have a much slower flow speed than women. Then we have 2C and 2D, extra time for refreshing the makeup, as we discussed before, and then for the chats. Well, in order to determine the exact ratio of PTAMs, about the duration of the stay, I once spent an evening with my friends, male and female. This was a very fun evening because it became a statistical battle between the men overestimating the women's chatting times and the women overestimating the, the slowness of the, of the flow speed. But in any case, we all could agree that women stay at least 50% longer per visit than men, making the PTAM ratio 60% for women to 40% for men. Now to the math. Here you can see all the detailed calculations I did. Please trust me that I've done all my maths very conscientiously by applying the so-called multiplication rule 
of the science of statistics. The staggering result is that women need 72.47% of the public toilet usage minutes in comparison to men just needing 27.53%. But remember, I said at the beginning that cubicles occupy more floor space? Please now fasten your seatbelts, because now you're going to see a floor plan with the ideal distribution. Yes, toilets in public buildings such as concert halls where visits are concentrated on certain time frames, you should assign 80% of the floor space to women and just 20% to men. On this plan, there are 26 BEDs for women, of course all cubicles, and 10 BEDs for men, 6 urinals and 4 cubicles. I truly hope that this presentation will become one day obligatory viewing for all architectural students and public officers in charge of building regulations, inspiring them to change the way they design public toilets in future. And what do I get out of this, not being a woman? Of course, as idealists are supposed to get nothing. But I must admit that I'm very much looking forward to the second halves of my future concerts, when after the intermission, all my female audience will be back in their seats. Thank you. <laughs>